imagine a universe infinitely small then an explosion of incredible fury what we call the big bang elementary particles the building blocks of matter hurtle through space at incredible speeds awash in a sea of intense heat they are unable to bind together but as the newly born universe expands it begins to cool a second after the explosion new particles form protons and neutrons the ingredients of an atom begin to appear after three minutes conditions are ripe for the manufacture of primeval hydrogen and helium an hour after the big bang the newly created elements will fill every corner of the universe today 15 billion years later as we look around us we see many elements besides hydrogen and helium the earth the atmosphere and all living things are also composed of heavier elements such as carbon oxygen iron magnesium and potassium to name a few the trillions of tons of heavy elements making up the ground under our feet makes us feel these elements are everywhere but the planet bound view is distorted when we consider how exceptionally rare the substances composing dirt are in all the universe when we look at the whole cosmos we see that hydrogen and helium still dominate compared with these two primal substances the combined totals of all the other elements are less than one percent of the total mass so where did all these rare elements come from we now understand that they are a gift of the stars our planet we ourselves are all composed of a fantastic substance indeed we are all made of stardust but where did stars come from in the first place how did the smoothly expanding universe give birth to these dense brilliant balls of gas for a while the stars and their galactic homes defied explanation in the big bang scenario but recently we moved a little closer to unraveling the mystery. In 1989, NASA launched a satellite called COBE to explore an unusual phenomenon called cosmic background radiation, a faint but all-pervasive noise emanating from deep space. Because it seems to come from everywhere, scientists believe it's a remnant of the Big Bang before the universe broke up into galaxies. If so, Measurements taken by the satellite may give us new information about how the early universe was formed. As far as we know, the universe began with what's called the Big Bang, a massive explosion which created essentially everything that we know today in the universe. And the universe has since expanded and continues to expand today. The structures which we see in the universe are remnants, relics of the original explosion and the developments that have taken place since then have given us uh, an idea of how that original explosion took place and what has happened since then. These gigantic and ancient structures across the sky tell us that some parts of the very early universe were denser than others. The denser areas, influenced by gravity, drew in upon themselves and became the birthplaces of galaxies and stars. As a protostar grows, it begins to collapse under its own weight. As it contracts, hydrogen atoms begin to collide faster and faster, causing the gas to heat up. Eventually, it becomes so hot that the atoms no longer bounce off of each other. Instead, they fuse to form helium the energy produced by the fusion of hydrogen atoms is enormous. We have learned how to fuse hydrogen to form helium. The result, the hydrogen bomb. As with the explosion of the H-bomb, from stars we see immense heat and light. Each star releases the energy equal to thousands of H-bombs every second. Fortunately, a lot of energy comes from very little mass, so there's plenty of hydrogen to keep some stars shining for billions of years. But no matter what mass a star has, its supply of hydrogen fuel eventually runs low. When that happens, it begins to die. The death stage or the last stage in the life cycle of a star 
is governed principally by the amount of mass that that ha star has to deal with. Uh, if, it's, if it's a very massive uh, star, much more massive than our sun, say a hundred times more massive than our sun, or, or 50 times more massive than our sun, we expect that in the collapsed state, it will produce what is called a black hole. Objects, uh, say, more intermediate in mass, say maybe just 10 solar masses, would collapse to form objects called neutron stars. And then garden variety objects like our sun and smaller masses would collapse to form white dwarfs. So we think that the last stage in the development of all stars, depending on their mass, would be either a white dwarf, a neutron star, or a black hole. We'll return to the Practical Guide to the Universe on the Learning Channel.